Hey, Danny boy, what's happening, man? How are you today? Uh, the same as I was yesterday and the day before that and the day before that. It's I, like I, I watch Dude, Where's My Car? And it's like, and then, and then. I watched Groundhog Day yesterday, so I thought it was, you know, kind of made sense. Hey, so welcome everybody to Exotica TV. Uh, tonight we have a quasi premiere, I guess. We've done the spotlight shows that we have been doing where we interview a lot of uh, different adult stars and talent throughout the industry. Um, but this one's kind of a, a special one because it is our Legends edition. Um, and Dan, why don't you explain what we're doing here? So what we're doing here is exactly what Jay just said. Um, <laughs> we've been we've been interviewing people that have been over at the show at Exotica. At our our main exhibit is uh, Exotica Spotlight, uh, sponsored by Bad Dragon, as always. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, yeah, this is where the you know, the biggest stars sign. And a few years ago, yeah, you know, we did at our Jersey show. We did, hey, you know, that's let's try you know, like a Hall of Fame, like Legends Edition with, you know, and we had like some of the top names. We'll talk about it a little bit more, but, you know, got to know our guest here, um, you know, when she did that show with us. And, you know, ever since then has quickly become uh, obviously one of our favorite people that comes to the show and everything. So without further ado, uh, let's get in the one and only Hall of Fame, Miss Christy Canyon. What up, Christine? Yeah. Well, here I am with you guys, and uh, I think I should have been with you guys physically, not like physically. That way, physically, we should have been in, in each yeah, other's arms. Right yeah, I think we should have been there right about now. Sure. But you know what? We're here, and we'll be there. I think at the end of June is the Illinois yeah. one. End of July. Uh, July, yeah, July 31st through August 2nd. Even uh, better. 10th okay. anniversary, yeah. Yeah, we're trying to push those things as far back as we can, hoping that uh, everything clears up and, and we get rolling again because we it's crazy. We, we've been doing these shows, and it's we're, we're actually kind of lucky because we get to see some of the folks that we wouldn't be seeing, you know? So it's great to see you. We see you usually four times a year, kind of become a staple of Exotica, and uh, we always love having you. And, and we see each other so briefly. It's like in passing <laughs> most of the time. But this it's is usually it, on your show, we're going to actually physically see each other more than we saw each other for the last four conventions. So true. I know, Not yeah. It's usually... Like, yeah, usually running into somebody at the bar. Yeah, where we're having you know winding down with a drink or or two or three or four or five six, <laughs> um, you know, and having a quick bite to eat, whatever we can because you don't eat all day when you're working at the show, and you're 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 like one of the busiest people at our shows because you're there with Vivid Radio, and you're constantly going on the air because you guys broadcast in the Chatterbait booth there. And it's great because I go there first thing. I love the early shift, so I do the signing at Bad Dragon whenever the doors open. And then I take my break, do Vivid Radio, and then I go back to the signing. That kind of thing. I like that kind of little split schedule there because then I get like the early birds, which are at the exoticas, the collectors, yep. the guys that come in with their wheelies and, you know, the hundred things to sign and that kind of thing. It's and a, then you get the later crowd, which are, you know, the, the younger. Yeah. Um, but no, I like the morning crowd the best. I love the collectors. They come in with the baseballs. They come in with those squishy boobies. You know, what's, you guys know who I'm talking oh, about. I know exactly what's, what you're talking about. What's the craziest thing that somebody's asked you to sign on one of our shows? It may be. Nothing's crazy. I got to say, after a couple of years in this business, nothing really shocks me. But kind of the most fun or most interesting um, is that one guy that shows up. I think it's in... Miami every year with a hundred squishy boobies. They're like they look like the size of like a baseball right. kind of thing. Um, that or I love seeing things like my old action figure doll or my old um, blow up doll. It's so funny you say that because I have a picture up of your of your action figure doll. When I, I so I Google imaged you and I was going through a bunch of like you know and all the old box covers and like all that stuff and I saw this vivid girl uh, doll and uh, not doll it's like a action figure right and so I, I thought, remember those. The, is that not was that not the craziest thing to see yourself on an action figure? Would you have ever expected something like that? Never. No, but you know, the, the 
fun, most fun that I loved um, representing, like that I had licensed my name out for, was through Vivid in that kind of like mid to late 90s, the blow up doll. There was something like I hit my stride when I actually got a blow up doll. Scariest thing I've ever seen once it was blown up. Like I would not want to tangle with Christy Cannon's blow up doll in a dark alley. It had fins. It didn't have fingers. It had like paws. You had a flipper baby. It was the scariest thing. And it only stood about four feet tall and I'm five foot seven. But the can was beautiful. The idea was awesome that someone could have sex with me but it was like my wayward twi- <laughs> not that i have a twin but that's what she would have looked like like it was a scary looking doll when she blew it up so the so ex- like- the execution was missing so, so very much so missing but it was still cool that was like that to me was like oh my god i got a blow up doll like to me that trumped the dildo with my name on it or, uh, you know, the vibrator that I chose the color of, that kind of thing. It was the blow-up doll, which was also a little trivia here. That was, and my fans will understand this, I was always known as the girl with, you know, the bush. And that was the first time I ever shaved. And I couldn't even do it because I drink too much coffee. See, I'm still drinking coffee. And um, so Bud Lee, for those of you who go back to the 90s, Bud Lee was married to Hyapatia Lee. He had to shave me. I couldn't even <laughs> do that. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm good at anymore. <laughs> but, and I didn't like it. I did not like the look on me. So the bush is back and hasn't left since. It did leave one other time, and I don't get political at all. But Nikki Hunter shaved me um, the last day that um, Bush Jr. was in office because we were like ridding the bush. It was like the end of the bush. So that was the so only was other time. Co- it, was, it was for a cause. So how are you going to celebrate when Trump gets out? Um, I don't even know. I haven't even gone down that road yet. Oh my God. You could dye like, yourself right- orange. <laughs> what? You could dye yourself orange. <laughs> you know what? And again, I was just listening. And again, I try not to get political. I was just listening to our mayor here in L.A. Oh, we have like 180,000 homeless. Thank you very much. Anyway, as much as I don't like the far left, I don't like the far right. I miss the one down the middle. Like as much as goofy as Trump is, believe me, our mayor is just as bad in a whole 180 degree way to me. That's my opinion. They both suck. Like Garcetti or Trump, they both suck. What happened to just like a normal person? Like bring back a Kennedy. Don't they have like a gaggle of kids? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, they keep dying. <laughs> so true. But what happened Hard to like laugh. a charismatic, down the middle person? I'm so sick of far anything. I, just, well, Evan, I want Evan them to be boring. Tell us that he's gonna run. I, yeah. Well, wait, wait, you both. I want them to be boring. Like that's, I want politics go back to being something that I don't want to watch. Like that is, you know, just where nowadays, you know, back, back in the, you know, Bush senior days, I mean, you know, it just every day kind of went and came and went and not a whole lot happened and nobody really paid much attention and there was no 24 hour news cycle. And now, you know, it's like, when's the last time you turned on the news that it didn't say breaking news? When's the you last, know, like... Some of it's... Here's the thing, though, with the first Bush senior. I remember I was at college at the Fashion Institute, downtown Los Angeles, and I remember my teacher saying, kids, this is the first war that you're going to live through right now. You know, so I remember there, that. there's yep. always been stuff going on. No one's perfect. Oh, you know, personally, I loved... And again, I don't want to get anyone mad. I loved Clinton. I don't care who was doing him. That's not my beeswax. I remember though that that was like that fat. I was a vivid girl. I, the feature dancing was unbelievable. Money Everyone was had ex- pouring down the down the rivers. Like I mean, there that that was the last time we yeah. were not running a deficit. Like so, everybody had money. Technology was a new thing. Right, disposable income was going right for those Polaroids at a strip club. You know what I mean? Like it was a, to me a beautiful era. And again, I'm not getting political. 
But it's just the choices now are like, you got to be kidding me. But I don't blame them. Who would want to take that hit as a president if people hate you? And they say it on Twitter and all these social media sites. It's not like in the day when, okay, Kennedy was having an affair, but the media kind of, you know, they kind of shut it up. They let things go. Now it's like you spit and they know about it. I wouldn't want to be the president. Only of the Christy Canyon fan club I want to be the president. (laughs) So... Let's let's go back a little bit. So you know, just you know, for those who don't know. So I mean, you mentioned Bud Lee, and I'm going to mention another name that I don't know, Jay, if you've even heard this name because yeah, I've been in the business of some way, shape, or form for 20 years, longer <laughs> than I you know want to say. But uh, Jim, so you you came out of the very infamous World Modeling Agency and the Jim South Porno Factory back in you know the the late 80s, right? Or early 90, well, 1990. No, I lied. Nineteen September, nineteen eighty four. I got in. Eighty four. Yeah. That was it. So, and with Jim South and Jim South, uh, for those who don't know, the and the World Mall Agency. I mean, pretty much that's where. I mean, everybody would come through. Like anybody who oh, was. I mean, they did. Back in the day, and again, it was nineteen eighty four. There were two agencies. Here in Porn Valley, I can't speak for San Francisco or for New York because I was always a Valley girl. Never shot in uh, New York. Did a few things in San Francisco, but, but there were two agents back in the day. Two, two. Jim South, who had ninety-five percent of the talent, and then a guy named Reb who owned something called Pretty Girls International. His claim, he had Amber Lynn and um, Amber's brother Buck Adams. Right. And maybe Jerry Butler, but those were the only ones. Like Jim had Ginger Lynn, Tracy Lords, myself. Like he had the, Mort- Mort- the cream of the crop. Like if anybody remembers, like with uh, when Katie Morgan, like when she did the uh, the the first real sex thing where she got her start with it, you see her actually walking into Jim's office there, right? You know, flat chested as flat chested can be, and then it, you know it all gravitates and her making uh, what was it, Space Nuts. Uh, it was a wicked movie with Stormy, and that's the famous scene from Forty uh, Year Old Version. Anyway, a little bit. So you did that. You did your own thing for a little bit, and then you know you became a Vivid Girl, and you were the longest reigning Vivid Girl, at least what I think. I dare somebody to challenge that. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I think so. I don't really know. I know that I was there from 1990 till um, I quit in like 1998, right. and it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. And I've still got my wagon hooked to their cart or my cart to their wagon. Like, I mean, they're just the most amazing company and the most amazing people. They're like family. Yeah. So you went from shooting your first uh, movie. Yeah, it was in uh, 84 with, and I know who your first, it was Swedish Erotica 57 yeah. with yeah. Ron Jeremy was your very first scene. Yes, and I was scared to death. I, I was. What was so Ron like? Great. What was Ron like then in 1980? Uh, you know, for as he is now, like, what's the difference of that? Besides, you know, all, like, what did he look like then? You know, who he always kind of reminded me of, and I don't know how else to describe it. He reminded me of like a young in 1984, a young Judd Hirsch. If anyone remembers Judd Hirsch from Taxi, or the, as has- some people know, the 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 father of Jeff Goldblum in Independence Day. Yes, yes, the millennials <laughs> will remember that, or the boomers, I don't know. But he kind of, like, he was good looking. Like, I was nervous, not because I, it was Ron Jeremy. He wasn't a bad-looking guy. Um, but I was just nervous because I hadn't been with that many people. I didn't know who this guy was. There were strangers in the room, and suddenly I was going to have sex on camera. Like, it was just all so foreign to me. But Ron Jeremy was a really good-looking guy. Um, Svelte. You know, um, dark, dark curly, showered. Kind of a nice little <laughs> figure, physique, whatever they call on? it. All right, the big. The, here's the million dollar he question. Got them a big old donger. <laughs> here's the million dollar question that everybody out there is dying to know. Crocs weren't invented in 1984, so what did he wear on his feet? Uh, <laughs> I, do, uh, I am so sorry, and I never. <laughs> Got into drugs, but I don't remember what kind of shoes Ron Jeremy was wearing about 35 years ago. <laughs> if anybody knows what he wore, what would it be like? If it comes what were the back, big shoes in '84? He was, what was it, socks and sandals, like, or or Adidas sneakers. 
You know, that oh, kind of thing, maybe. I would think like, like the, sandals. You know, yeah, like with like flip-flops with um, socks. I would think uh, ho- the hotel flip-flops. Or a pair of slippers that he got totally, from like a yes. hotel. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Whatever it was, it wasn't glamorous. <laughs> I stayed at the Mondrian last night, and I got this awesome pair of slippers. <laughs> Check out these shoes. Was the Mondrian even around then? More like the yeah. Ramada or no, the No, the Mondrian was there because you had to hide on Sunset. And right across the street, was uh, the Mondrian was there right around then. In the 80s? Yeah, because I remember my okay. first time out in L.A. was 89. I was out there with a band, and... We stayed at uh we stayed at we were at the high the you know the riot house they called it on sunset and across the street was a Mondrian. Okay, I do remember the Hyatt. I think it's right next to the comedy store. Yes. Yeah, that's the famous hotel where everybody you know, I do check remember. out Zeppelin threw yep. the TV out the window, all that shit, or whoever that did that. So anyway, so going back to the Vivid Girl thing, um, you know, you did that. You were there for what, nine years, right? Yeah, about eight years, eight or nine being a vivid girl making films. But I never left Vivid. Even when I quit making films, they were still running my website. Um, And I would still do things like action figure dolls, which I think I did in like 2000. So I wasn't technically a working Vivid girl, but I was always doing something with them. I was always doing kind of projects with them. Like that was in 2000 that we did those. We did a bobblehead in like 2001. <laughs> what was the stupidest? Oh, you all stupidest. Like, sorry, Stephen, or Yo, and Marcy. What was the, what was the what was the wackiest? Thank you, Jay. Good word. The wackiest thing because Vivid, again, for those who don't know, they put out like vodka? they licensed they, they licensed their name to everything. Skateboards. I mean, you know, the action figures. What was the craziest thing that you saw? The wackiest. Sorry. That I ever did was probably the bobblehead. That was kind of like. We, I think the Vivid Girls who did them got a flat fee. And then I don't think that anything ever happened with them. I don't know what happened to the company. Like, that's, a surefire, that's a surefire hit. I don't know why those didn't sell. They should have had bobble boobs. Like, instead did of the head bobbling, the boob bobble. Okay, remember what I was saying about the, the blow-up doll was a little funky looking? The bobble head was even scarier. <laughs> I, gotta find, I gotta find those. It's actually funny that you say that because... But they all- Mar- Marcy Something more fun and more adventurous than others but in the end everything we did there was fun in the 90s we had the 800 numbers but that was when you couldn't even say a bad word or 900 whatever those stupid number you know 976 and that was when you couldn't even say a bad word over the phone but line was, but was so it like 976 it, fuck oh we were a little classier than that <laughs> 976 fuck Christy no I'm kidding um, <laughs> we had to do like nursery stories but we couldn't say like oh rapunzel fucked whoever so we had to say oh rapunzel let down her hair and it was oh cascading down her naked back but we couldn't say to her even her ass crack like but we had to make it sound like really sexy i so, loved to hear those and again jay and i do the at, at our shows uh this the last hour of the vivid lo- broadcast live from exotica they made the the insane mistake of saying to Jay and I that we could have our own show on there, which gave us visions of grandeur, hence what you see before you right now. But look at this, look, look at this domain. Well, well, this in a pandemic. Take this but anyway, vivid radio. Yeah, and and all the time, Marcy's just like yeah, you know, and Marcy Hirsch, uh, you know, vice president over at Vivid, and she's the producer there, and she's sitting there, and we're sitting there with one of the hosts because they don't let us off of our leash there, so it's us and uh, you know Christy and. Or you know Aiden Starr, Annie Cruz, they're like our, they got to be like our right. mom, like, and they're usually worse than we are. But well, you can't say poop, you can't talk about poop, like we want to talk about poop. Poop's funny. <laughs> uh, you know we have very few rules on Vivid Radio. Um, it has to be a step relative. Um, you can't like, say father or not. You know it has to be stepdad right. and I. We can't talk about number two. You can talk about number one, but not number two. Number two, and everybody is pooping. Another rule that I keep forgetting and I keep breaking that rule. Number one is is peeing. I what about oh, you? You can't talk about direction. Pee? Well, you just said number one, number two, so I think you're just like automatically conditioned by Vivid Radio. Those sensors. No, we can talk about golden showers. Number, we can't talk about scatting. I, who, 
you know, I don't think anyone. I draw. I draw a line. I just, I just like to threaten Marcy that we're actually going to talk about it. We don't really ever have any plans on actually talking about it. We just like, you know, like to see her run around behind the scenes and freak we're, out. We're going to tell you a secret, Christy. Before we do the yes. show, every time we get really, really high. <laughs> oh, you are really so stoned. funny! Oh my god, good for you. The well, last you time we were eating, <laughs> you in got, Jersey, you we were really high. Dan, you got mad at me last show. Get mad at you last show. What, Why did, you get mad what did you do? I didn't do anything. I had a good looking young man, an actor, I don't even know his name, shirt and a bra, and he was like kind of like massaging me. I guess that's illegal. But my boobs weren't even. And I got mad about that? Yes. Maybe because I wanted to be the ones massaging the boobs. I don't freaking know. Jay, you didn't get mad. Dad came over. He's like, you can't touch him. Like, put my shirts on and my bra. He's like, nope, 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 nope. I really didn't know. Mad's mad's an exaggeration. No. I wasn't mad. I never (laughs) see. You apparently weren't that high that day. (laughs) Believe me, I'm pretty much much better when he's high. (laughs) Yeah. Jay, Jay finds me much more comical. See, if you were, you would have seen, like, the boobs in, like, 5D. Powerful oh. is the word, yeah. <laughs> More like, yeah, you know, we were doing the last Vivid show, and the last show, and now we just gravitated. We started eating White Castles <laughs> during the broadcast. Oh, my God. And we were, every every guest that came, we were feeding White Castles as we're doing it. Yeah. We've become oh, naturals. Oh, my. Who has yeah. White Castles? I love White Jersey. Castles. Well, well, Jersey. Jersey. The Sunday of Jersey. Them. And you've, you okay, come to find us on Sunday, off. and we, yeah, have, we have a staff office yeah. full of White Castle. Like more we get White about Castle 200 than, White Castles. Yeah, then you okay, know what time. to do with. Next. We literally get them. So, Christy, I have a question. When yes. when did you start with Vivid Radio? Were you around really from the beginning when they started that as well? Or? Yeah. Oh, no. At the time, I was at Playboy Radio for like Playboy, eight years. Playboy That's how I knew you to begin with. Yes. So I started off in like 2005 at Playboy Radio. Right. And I got to say how lucky I've been to have Jim South, Vivid, Playboy. Like I have been spoon fed this whole entire <laughs> career. I mean, really, no no horror stories with me. I'm, you know, glad to report. So anyway, so I'm at Playboy for years and suddenly Hugh Hefner licensed it. I'm not sure what the details are, but the people that own like Manwin were licensing it out. Somehow there was a switch in ownership toward the end. And I thought, uh, and everyone was like, yeah, we're going to get raises. Da, da, da. I'm thinking, uh, I don't know who these people are. And believe me, we we're making fine money as it was. So um, within the first six months, they fired our station manager, a guy named Farrell. I, I, I remember love Farrell. to this day. Farrell yep. is amazing. And they let him go, and suddenly I thought, oh no, now we're gonna, we're all in trouble now, because it was penny wise, pound foolish. They put a cameraman in charge of running three stations. And the guy's like, I don't wanna deal with three stations full of cuckoo girls. I wanna be at the beach hitting on girls with my pitbull. Mm. So I saw the, the downfall coming. Oh, then they lost Playboy Espanol. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's like, I don't wanna be here, Christy. Then they lost Playboy Espanol. And all of a sudden I'm like panicking, because I love radio. So I called Farrell and I said, listen, the ship's going down. I smell it. Like, I, you know, let's go to Steve at Vivid and see if he could get the contracts. So I was kind of Benedict Arnold, Playboy Radio. I'm very sorry. I was the one behind it. So Farrell met with Steve at Vivid and they went to New York. Steve Hirsch is like a mastermind. And within six months, he got it. Yeah. And my deal was... I just want my same pay and my same or whatever hours I want, please. He's like, absolutely, Christy, whatever so you, you want. So that so was ha- awful. How awesome. many shows a week do you do with Vivid? It's down to four. It was five. And then about six months ago when we renewed our contract for three more years, it um, the budget cuts. I lost my Fridays. But can I tell you, I don't know how I work five days a week. <laughs> I really don't. Suddenly That's- I'm like... I wake up on Friday, I've got my hair, I've got my nails, i got this, that, and I'm like... And you didn't even waste a weekend day doing it. No. It was fab. I love five, four days a week now. I have no problem with it. It's beautiful. 
now, you know, now we're off, but we'll be back up and running. But that's how Vivid came about. I think I took two weeks off between Playboy and Vivid Radio. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I worked it with Stephen Farrell to get it on Vivid because I knew that Playboy was going to completely mess it up, which they eventually did. What? Whoever took them over, I don't even know if they knew who I was for the first six months at Playboy. They're probably like, who are all these checks for? Who's who, Who's your favorite guest that you've had on there? You know what? That's such a loaded question because there, a lot of them are great in so many different ways. I like the fun ones. I like the ones that'll put diapers on with me and we have like pissing contests and see <laughs> who you know, can pee the most. I, I like the girls that'll let me like shove, you know, peanut butter M&Ms up their asshole. Okay, how many can I get up there? Oh, look at there's three dozen. I like the I girls that'll Dan. play with me. Wait, this is this is happening on Vivid Radio? Yeah. Now they put in cameras, we, so I have to We can't talk I'm about poop. Tone it down. Marcy, this if you're listening to in this. real life. I didn't realize that. But now, about a month before we took our break, one day I walked in, I'm like, why is there a camera in the corner? Um, <laughs> but no, we can. We have fun on air. It's so much fun. I just, uh, I have so many great guests that I can't narrow it down to just one or two. They're all, they're, not they're all so much fun. Believe me, I get some girls that like, I don't even ask to see their tits because I know that that is just not going to happen. Dan, I can so. I can go ahead and jump in and answer this question for Christy. Actually, um, her favorite guest <laughs> was the peanut butter M&M chick. Was in two thousand and probably six or seven. It was yours truly, Jay Handy, on Playboy Radio when when we were very 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 first launching Exotica. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, I, I remember because I went to, AV, like, it's funny because, you know, we've been doing this now for 14 years. And so you forget what it was like when we first started and like going into AVN when the AVN show was at the Sands Expo Center and 200,000 yes. square feet of space and double decker exhibits and whatever. And you had to go there and like truly press the flesh you know i mean like you just had to go and network and nobody yeah. knew what exotica was you know we walked in like hey we're gonna be this huge show and da -da -da -da, you know had no idea what we were doing or no new we knew no one and so i somehow weaseled my way onto your show and you in <laughs> interviewing me and it was like one of the you know one of the first times that we were like hey people actually know about exotica <laughs> And, that is, and you know what? Here's the thing. I love that story. And we're on Sirius XM. So we have millions. You know what I mean? It's a great promotion to get your name out there. Really, it's an amazing show. I love it. I love my little dog and pony show. I hope it goes on forever. Well, it's such so an awesome I transition. I mean, transitioning from mm -hmm. shooting and, you know, with Vivid Video and then finding this like kind of second newfound career of broadcast is, is pretty awesome. You know what? It just all flowed. Like I quit making film to dance until 2002. And then I was like, okay, 12 years on the road. I am done doing Christmas shopping at the Pittsburgh airport. Like it was just what do I do? What do I do? And it wasn't even like, oh my God, how am I going to pay my rent? Or it was like, what, what do you do after making films and dancing? Like I can't go get a job at Macy's. I tried that once at Bullock's back in the day, but my brother-in-law is like, there's this new site called eBay. You must have some memorabilia. And I'm like, hell yeah. So I started doing that. And then I went to a writing school, a writing class that my sister had gone to. And I started writing all these really fun stories about the business. And my teacher was like, oh, my God, Christy, that you, you just have to kind of fill in gaps. But that's a book. So then I wrote my book, which yes. I haven't even Light, ordered. Lights, anyway, Lights, Camera, Lights, Sex. Camera Sex. Yes. And then I went on Playboy Radio to promote it. And they said, oh, my God, Julie Ashton's about to quit. She's going to get married, move to a different state, have kids. You are amazing on radio. Do you want her job? And I'm like, yes. 
So I kind of, it's like that game leapfrog where I've just Synergy, been kind right. of jumping from one of the pad to the next. I don't know what the next one is, but something always happens. No, that's really cool. I'm going like, to be an ambassador for the Exotica convention. There you go. You already are, though. I <laughs> know. You already are. Very true. Co-owner. <laughs> You don't want to be an owner of it, trust me. You don't, no. Oh, no. Now's not the time to buy in. <laughs> I'm not that adventurous. I love working for someone. I love getting my paycheck. Yeah. Like, I don't have any intention of, like, starting anything, per se. Do you know what I mean? Like, I like just showing up and doing my thing. Like, everyone used to say, oh, you know, why didn't you ever start your own company? Why? But honestly, I don't want to. If you think about it, like, the former performers that started their own companies, I mean, most of them are – you know, you eventually have to come back to performing because something like, look at Jenna. I mean, her company was bought by Playboy for how many millions of dollars? And, you know, and, you know, really right now, you know, not to, you know, speak, you know, illy of her, but I mean, you know, she's not, you know, at the top of her, you know, world right now. And that was, you know, unfortunate because she, I think from what I heard, she ended up obviously with a portion of that, not certainly the whole thing. She had a lot of partners and the attorneys. But it's sad because there were very few girls, and I got to give Jenna props for really doing what not a lot of girls did. Now she had a, a big crew behind her. Well, you know, she had her then husband, this and that. But um, it is sad that she didn't um, hang on to it. Right. But not many girls did their own. I never wanted to start a company. I got a royalty on all my units sold, and I thought, why? I don't want to. I love being in front of the camera. I don't want to have to worry about talent showing up. I don't want to worry about feeding these people. I don't want to worry about tax, you know. On, right. I just want to get there, have amazing sex with amazing guys and girls, and then go home with my check. I don't want to is worry that about just, this. Is that too much to ask, Dan? <laughs> well, I don't want to have sex with amazing guys, but, uh, you know, the girls, you know. Um, yeah, everybody's look. Everybody's like, so what would so nowadays, right? Everything's different, and and you you're embracing some of the old and some of the new. So like you know, the old as far as like yo know, making appearances still and keeping relevant and doing that and the work, you know, the new like doing your OnlyFans and things like that also, which is how everybody's you know pretty much making money now. And yeah, you know, we'll put out the end you know, um, you know, where people can find you on OnlyFans there. But you know, nowadays it seems like yeah, you know, the girls don't want to. Some of the newer girls don't want to do appearances or. They don't want to feature dance. Um, you know, they figure that they can just, you know, shoot a couple of movies, you know, create an Instagram account, a Twitter account, show some, you know, booty and go on their OnlyFans and that's it. I mean, so what's your advice for like girls that are getting into the business now on how to make it last? Because you've had a career, you know, that's gone on, you know, you know, 30 years in the business in some way, shape or form. <sighs> oh, God, it's so tough. Um you have to do it for starters because you want to. That was always the thing for me is that I loved what I was doing. I never did it for the money because when I started, we made about, oh, $500 a scene kind of thing. It had nothing to do with making money. And when I started, there were no byproducts. There were no feature gigs in the 80s. There were no Instagrams. And that you did your scene and you got your $500 and that was it. It wasn't about money so that's my first thing do it because you're doing it because you'll want to do it don't do it for any ulterior motives um, my other thing was i never did anything that i didn't want to do to this day i never did an anal scene i don't like anything up my rear i don't even do it in my personal life not even m &Ms? 36 double d's i got a nice bush down there and i got a beautiful mouth if the the rear is what you want you're with the wrong girl point is I never did anything that I didn't want to do. So that to me is another huge thing that I've always told girls. Because once you start compromising your, you know, your integrity, I don't know if that's the right word, but once you start doing something that you don't want to do, it's going to start messing with your mind. Then you're going to end up being bitter and hating the business. Um, the other thing is to treat it like a business. Every day, I my show is from 12 to 1. I go to Vivid my show, but I get there at 1130 every day. Even if I don't have a guest, I'm never late. Why do I get there at 1130? I want to make sure the equipment's working. I eat my lunch. Like I've got my, I'm like, you know, a Pavlov's dog with that. Um, I don't ever, I've never, never shown up late for radio. Like you better take this as a business. That's the other thing that I say is don't treat it like, 
oh, I'll just go suck another dick later. No, treat every scene, treat every appearance, treat every whatever it is, even if you don't feel, I mean, unless you're on your deathbed and you're sick, but that's like a business. Now it's a business that you can have an amazing time at, but um, treat it like a business, love what you do and do it for the right reasons, if that makes sense. And save your fucking money. I had a boyfriend and he's like, yeah, it's not going to stay pink forever, Christy. Save it. It's fuck you money. And I'm like, <laughs> pink, what color does it turn? Like, <laughs> <"It's still> pink. <laughs> I know. And I guess it's a fucking expression. But those words always stuck with me. And you know what? It's so good to have fuck you money. Don't fucking tell me what to do. Fuck you. Like, I get that totally. And it is fun. That's the other thing. Make hay while the sun shines. I forget. But anyway, you yeah, Make definitely. Hay while the sun shines. Yep. All right. So we're going to do a little thing here. This, this is how we usually wrap up our stuff because we're fun okay. people. Quick answers, like the lightning round, so to speak. You ready? Okay. Yes. What actress would play you in a movie about your life? Selma Hayek. Interesting. Uh, I have to say it fast, right? It's like word association. No, sure. That's no, perfect. Have you ever laughed so hard you peed your pants? Yes. Have you ever laughed so hard you pooped your pants? No, but I think that, I coughed when I pooped. That, that was that was for Marcy, by the way. Um, <laughs> what's a, what's I a hidden tap? I had a stomach flu cold once, and I coughed, threw up, and shit in my pants at the same time. It was not a pretty day. Go so on. Sexy. Welcome to Christy Canyon Fun Facts. Um, <laughs> what is a hidden... What is a t hidden talent that you have? Certainly not cooking. Um, hidden talent. I could lick my own nipple, but I don't think that's a hidden talent. And we can't um, show that, unfortunately. It's a good talent, though. Hidden that's talent. A good talent. I don't have many talents, but don't tell anyone. I don't know how I've gotten by this whole time. <laughs> what I was the first concert you ever went to? Devo. Devo, Whip nice. Whip it good. De do, 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 do. Devo at... The uh, it's now the Great Western Forum, but it was called the Forum. It's over in Inglewood, California. Um, I had a lighter. If, <laughs> if if you woke up tomorrow as a dude, what would be the first thing you would do? First three things you would do. I would love to know what it felt like sticking. Can I say the C you can word? Say, yeah, of course. Okay, I'd love to know what it felt like sticking my cock in a wet warm velvet pussy wait you like, can't say what? pussy what <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding i said you can't say pussy i'm kidding i'm kidding oh, i'm kidding <laughs> i can say cock back <laughs> fine in a cunt um that would better be the first. i want to know as a guy what it felt like to have a mouth suck my cock off and i think i'd also want to explore that prostate fucking wait you don't like anal though she she woke up with a dick well, and she I... didn't even make it out of her bedroom to finish her three wishes. What else is there? <laughs> but wait, you, Helicopter? You, say you, like, you say you don't like anal. So you're, if you, you know, what does it do unto others as you would, they would do unto you. But here's the thing. A guy has a pee spot. Yeah, guys I don't have, have a pee state. Okay. Do yeah. I need to educate you on ass fucking for guys? I heard there's this thing called the G spot. Well, that's in the pussy. <laughs> the no, you can't say pussy. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's in the cunt. The P spot, though, is a true thing for a guy. We don't have a prostate spot. Do I have oh, a prostate? Even? You, I don't know. You do not have a prostate spot. You're no, not. see, I went to public schooling, no. so when I don't get anything, I blame it on the LAUSD. Dan plays dumb when it comes to butt stuff, but he knows. Oh, so <laughs> I'll, I'll train you when I see you in Miami. Yeah, no. What were your nicknames growing up? Did you have any nicknames? Spot. Wait, say Spot. it again. My nickname was Spot because my mom said that I always had spots on my shirt, like food and drinks, and I was always dirty, so my nickname was Spot. Not to be confused and I think my with dad Red Sharpie. No, yeah, not to be the Red Sharpie on your boobs right now. You guys, I am so I can't get it off. Um, I tried like rubbing alcohol. It's it's again for people that are just tuning it. It's I have a guy on my OnlyFans that loves me to write, I heart, and then his first name and his last name, and then down there it says fuck me with uh, fuck me and then his name and arrows. What a giver I am. What a giver I had to you know. 
So you I can go on all only night. find yeah, find Christy on OnlyFans to do that. But um <laughs> uh biggest turn on. Biggest turn on um is a guy that makes me laugh, a guy that makes me feel special, a guy that makes me come over and over, a great kisser. Romance. I love romance. Christy. Maybe because I haven't had it in six weeks since lockdown. I don't know. Ask me when I go to a swing party what my favorite turn on is. <laughs> it might be different. I have not been with anyone for five weeks now. I'm going a little cuckoo. So right now, excuse me while I whip this guy out. in person would be a turn on. Christy, you're special. Yes. You're special. I'm special. You're special. People like you. You're Why special. Because you, so you said you wanted to be, be feel special, so I'm telling you you're special. You oh, <laughs> get naked and, and hey, Jay, I made her laugh too. <laughs> yes, you did. Him. You got two out of. But you have to be here and naked with me. No, um, turn-ons are really cool guys, really cool people, like guys that I date that are really cool. Unfortunately, the coolness always wears off with me. It's a very fleeting thing. You got about six months, and then and then it goes away. It does. I'm yeah. a Gemini, and I don't know who like a studies like astrology. I'm a triple Gemini, so there's like six people in me. Triple Gemini, double D. Um, worst date you've ever been on, and why? Worst thing I've ever been on. Worst date. Worst date. Oh, worst date. Oh my god. You know what? I don't mean to be like Pollyanna here. I haven't had many bad dates because I get great stories for radio out of them when they're bad. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I've gone on dates where I'll meet them for brunch because, you know, and I remember going to meet this one guy and like sitting down and going, oh, fuck. Like, he wasn't as cute at the restaurant as he was at the old Playboy building kind of thing. Suddenly I saw him in the daylight and it just wasn't as sexy anymore. And then, eh. but, um, I've never really had a bad day because I always find the humor and the fun and everything. I don't like come home and go, oh my God, my makeup. No. Now there have been some where I've been like, fuck, I can't believe I fucked them. But oh, well, it was kind of fun. But I don't have any bad memories of any bad dates. I really don't. Because I make the most out of everything. I turn everything into fun. Like I went on a date with one guy probably two months ago, right before all this broke out. And he was talking, and I don't even friggin' know what he was talking about. He was a writer or something. I'm thinking, oh, my God, you are so boring. But then I kind of tuned in. He was saying how he was writing a book. And, and all of a sudden, I thought, okay, I'm going to blow this guy's mind before I get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, I just read the best book. And he's like, and he, I think he forgot I was even there. He was on such a roll talking about himself. And he kind of like, you know, zoomed. He didn't know who I was. And then he's like, oh, what book? And I remember a book I read like four years ago and I just pulled it out of my ass. And I said, The Art of the Pimp by Dennis Hoff. And he looked, he's like, what? And I said, well, you know, you were talking about your book and I just wanted to share that I really read a really good book, The Art of the Pimp by Dennis Hoff. And all of a sudden he looked at me, he's like, who are you again? And I said, oh, no one, no one. Anyway, I got to so like, you know what I mean? So I never have a bad time because I always make fun of them. They don't even know I'm making fun of them. When you when you date, right? I mean, do you date as you know your non-adult pers persona or both or whatever comes up? I, I just go with the flow. Like do you, you go know, on like I what is it? Really like, do you go on like Match. dot com and just no. like fuck with people ever or anything no, no, like that? No. You can't do that. I've never been on an internet Tinder? date. I've never gone on the internet. I go to the fucking market and I meet people. You know what I mean? Like I'm kind of old school where I like to see them and if someone's cute, I you know oh. You know, so, um, can you help get that thing off the top shelf? And next thing I know, he's got my number, that kind of thing. But then another thing that I love to do, like there was this really cute guy at the gym a few months ago. It was cute, but mm. so he's like, well, can I get your digits? And I'm thinking, oh, God, I so don't want to go out with you. Who's, who the fuck says, can I get your digits? digits. Like, I'm not Those are figures. So I said, yeah, 855-998-4843, which is Vivid Radio. So I'm doing my show, right? And I see a, a area code come up that was most likely his, and then it goes dead. The next day or two days later, I see him at the, the gym. And he's like, who are you? What was that number I called? What do you do? And I said, well, Vivid Radio, I'm Christy Canyon. He's like, I'm an actor. I can't associate with somebody like you. 
And I thought, yeah, why are you at the gym at 11 o'clock if you're an actor? And it's a shitty gym. It's not even one of the good ones. I can't associate <laughs> with you. That's like... But, I, too, like, if I don't really like someone, I just give them the vivid hotline. And, it, you know, Smart. kind of weeds them out. Smart. Or James Bartley. I just number. have fun with it. I, I don't take it seriously, if that <laughs> makes sense. You can give him James Bartley's number, too. He likes that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, James may want him. I don't know. But does, that's the thing. Like, oh, it's, just, it's all just a fucking game in my life that way. I don't take any of them seriously. And I might for a month or two months, maybe even six months. But in the end, uh, I still haven't found that Mr. Right. Does size matter? Yes, it does. Five to seven inches is my ideal size. I love the pool. Don't get me wrong. I love, you know, the Peter North, T.T. Boy, Stephen St. Croix, Mark Davis, but not on a nightly pound. I, I My system is not built for 12 inches every night. Speaking of Mark Davis, do you know Kobe Ty? Yes. Do you know love. where she is now? No. That's Jay's favorite of all time. And you she's know my, what? Sometimes she, they go underground, and that's the best thing possible. She's my white if, whale. If anybody knows Kobe Ty, if anybody out there knows Kobe Ty or where she is, let us know there is a reward. <laughs> that, you and, there's, me. and there's an award to get our Instagram back to. <laughs> yes. We have many rewards out there. <laughs> exotic is based on rewards, the reward system. I uh, will put your name on my boobies in Sharpie if you can find Kobe Ty. <laughs> I loved her though. Can I tell you? Oh. One of the nicest, nicest people. Just a real, just adorable and like a little living doll. So sweet. And like this tiny. I mean, she was a, I never worked with her, but we did signings in Vegas together. Just nice. Not a mean bone, no airs about her. There was only one vivid girl that I didn't like. Who? Oh. Glad you asked. I can never remember her name. She was after me. She dated <laughs> Brad Armstrong. She was an Asian Jessica girl. Drake? Who? Jessica no. Drake, Asian girl. She's a wicked girl. Oh, no. wait, 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 wait. Not Asian. What? No, obviously not Asia Carrera. Um, no, I love Asia. Asia's awesome. Um, Asian girl in the 2000 era. She was just nasty. Um, I don't know her name. That's how insignificant. Gorgeous as fuck. I mean, beautiful. Who the hell but Asia? just nasty. What? Jay. Asia Carrera, Jay, no, right? No. Jay, Jay knows every Asian porn star ever. No, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm Wikipediaing this as we go. So, uh, dark hair, of course, dark eyes. I mean, Jay, call. Let's, 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 um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call Marcy. <laughs> call Marcy. And she's the only Marcy. girl. And she's the only girl that ever sued Vivid. Really? Just not a nice person across the board. Yeah, you guys talk amongst yourselves. We're calling Marcy. There, there's, there are so m I'm actually looking at the list of Vivid Girls. There Wait, hold on. We're calling Marcy. Hold on. <laughs> Marcy! Um, Can you hear that? Yep. If, yeah, if you said her name, I'd be like, that's it. But I never worked with her. We signed together, and she was just not a nice person. Ask, well, ask the, who the one was. The one time sweet. Marcy, I'm calling her. She doesn't answer the phone. I hope she's all right. <laughs> Taking it now. Eight, She's enjoying one. the quarantine. Oh my! <laughs> Freaking Marcy. She's there with her dogs, just hanging. I, mean, I, I can't remember this girl's name at all. All right, well, we're moving on, moving on, moving on. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? If I could have one superpower, I'd like to be able to um, have like the bionicness. Like, remember Bionic Woman? I legs and arms where you could lift anything like Tony Stark. Uh, run as fast as you want I want bionic limbs no not like Tony Stark like the bionic woman like Jamie Summers yes okay Who like I old school bionic remember old school bionic, and as she <laughs> ran <laughs> you <laughs> <hear> that, <laughs> that kind of yeah. noise that was my favorite show I loved it way better than the six million dollar man no oh, no no the six million dollar man was my favorite show though but then they so, jumped the shark with the bionic woman. Then they had the bionic kid and the bionic dog. <laughs> we still don't know who the thing is. I'm, we're going to have to yell at Marcy. Um, most embarrassing moment on set. Most embarrassing moment on set. You know, I don't 
I never, I, I hate to be like Pollyanna here. I don't know if I had an embarrassing moment. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what it was. I was brand new in the business. I didn't know what a douche was at 18. Okay. So I go to Ginger I know Man. What a, I know what a douche is. <laughs> I know what a douche is now. But there I am, 18, and I have no idea what a douche is. And um, Ginger Lynn was my first girl-girl scene. And she's like, Christy, you know, go in the bathroom. There's douches. And I'm like, okay. Thinking, what the fuck is a douche, right? So I see, you know, the makeup girl's like, oh, you put the nozzle in your... I can't say that. You put the nozzle in your cunt, <laughs> squeeze the, the bottle, and then you actually know, we, you're done. we just got we just so got I a, hold on. The bottle in my cunt. We just got a message from our producer. We can't say cunt anymore either. <laughs> okay, uh, Gucci. Can we go back to pussy? Uh, something uh, else. Vagina. Ah, uh, boring. Clinical. Um, Meat wallet. Putang. <laughs> Meat wallet. <laughs> That's so gross. Clam. Pink taco. Fuck all. Fuck all. Fuck all. Fuck all. You could fit in whatever hole, whatever word you want to. So, so I put the juice in me. I throw the bottle away. I walk up to set to work with Ginger Lynn, right? I'm trying to impress her. I'm this new goofball in the business. And I'm standing there in front of Ginger Lynn, and water just comes pouring out of my meat taco, meat pink wallet. taco. <laughs> and I'm like, what just came out? And Ginger's like, what is that? And I said, I don't know, I douched. And Ginger's like, Christy, did you sit on the toilet and let it all fall out? And I said, no. So I think that was the most embarrassing was I walk up to go have sex with Ginger Lynn and fucking douche water just comes <laughs> spilling out of my pussy everywhere. Favorite co-star male, favorite co-star female. Just name quick. Ginger Lynn, Peter North. All right. And last but not least... You have probably one of the most iconic names in uh, the history of adult. But you know, you know the whole porn name game. So it's the name of your first Wait, pet in the street. Again? You have the most like one of the most iconic names in adult ever. So the porn name game, you know, it's the, the your first pet, the street you grew up on. Oh yeah. Loki Lillian Way. Loki Lillian would be your name. Loki Lillian. I cut crazy Lillian. And the dog was crazy. We had to put him to sleep. So. He bit a couple kids. Hey. <laughs> so Ginger, <laughs> remind. On that note, uh, just remind. Yeah, we want to thank you for coming on. Yeah, obviously this is a lot of fun for us. Remind everybody where they can find you online. Um, the best place to find me is my Twitter, which is Christy Canyon one one, and my onlyfans.com slash Christy Canyon one one. I have an Instagram. There's also a fake one out there. I don't even answer my Instagram. I don't even remember my fucking password. So stay away from Instagram. So moving Stick on. with Twitter and OnlyFans. And they're both Christy Canyon one one. And you also Stephanie. do. And you also do cam, the cameo, uh, cameo Christy Canyon. That th those things must be entertaining to make. Oh my God, I gotta tell you. I am having so much fun getting creative. Obviously, I'm not on radio, so I have an extra hour and a half a day to get stuff done. I am getting so creative, and I love it. I love it. Um, I love Cameo. I've, I've done maybe 20. I just signed up a week ago. They are so much fun. Yeah. They're really, really great to do. That's the thing. There's always something fun to do in this business. I will always find something interesting. Nice. Because I have no other fucking talents. <laughs> you have many talents. That we have nothing else, yes. no, nowhere to go and nothing to do right now. All so. my talents are in the adult business. I don't cook. I don't sew. I don't know foreign languages. I can't play an instrument. I'm not even sure who our third president was. I just, you know what? Somehow I, I coast along and it's work. So well, what you can do, you do well. Yes. I'll take that one. Yes. Thomas, I Je Thomas Jefferson. I have no idea. I, just, I might have just said that. Third. I think I might have invented was... that quote. <laughs> no, no, that was the third president. Was he? Yeah, was it a Washington, you know Adam, Thomas Jefferson? And I really don't care. That's the beauty of That's me. That's the right answer. I don't That's, really... it. That's it. I don't right. really care. If I <laughs> well, want to know it, I'll learn it. So be sure to visit Christy. Christy, thank you for kicking off our Legends edition of Spotlight. Hopefully, we will see you at all of the shows this year. Uh, you know, our first show, obviously, was should have been this weekend when we're recording this, but uh, Exotica Chicago's 10th anniversary. 
uh, July 31st through August 2nd. Exotica DC is now, in case you haven't heard, December 11th and 13th. I did. James My Bartley. Aunt, James Bartley told you. <laughs> what else did he tell you? Anyway. And you Marcy, thanks. For, Marcy, you, thanks for nothing. We looked we over the vivid. And I looked over the vivid girl list while we were like talking here, and there's no other Asian other than Hyapatia Lee, Asian. Well, even Hyapatia Lee wasn't Asian. No. No. It wasn't, it wasn't Asia see, Carrera. No, no. Well, here, here's a list of vivid girls, real quick Asia Carrera, Barbara Dare, Brianna Banks, Chasey Lane, Chloe Jones, Christy Canyon, Deirdre Holland, Devin. Diana Loren, definitely not. Ginger Lynn, Hannah Hilton, Heather Hunter, ah. Hyapatia Lee, Janine, Jenna, Jennifer Stewart, Jen Teal, definitely not. Julia Ann, Caden Cross, gotta lay off the peyote. Kobe Ty, Nikki Charm, Nikki Randall, Nikki Tyler, Raquel Darian, oh, Raylene, so Savannah Sampson, Savannah, um, Sunrise Adams, T Tawny Roberts, Taylor Hayes, Tara Patrick. It was a Tara? Oh! No, Tiffany Taylor and Tori Wells. You, you could never she even ask that question. A, she was a flash in the pan girl. Well, those are Maybe all the girls. She was there for a year, kind of disappeared, then sued Vivid for something, lost her. She won like 500 DVDs. She never picked them up. She was just, oh, you know what? Sadly, I, I don't know offhand because um, she's not worth knowing, but I will figure it out. And then you could like put a little something in when you put this up that that's who it was. I'm I'm getting a text at like four o'clock in the morning, New York time one time. <laughs> anyway, Christy, thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy. Christy. Please stay safe out there in uh, California. Don't be going. Your gym's closed. Don't Everything be uh, closed. I go to the market. I have one day a week right now where I do my errands. I go to my PO box one all in one day. I do PO box, post office, market. Maybe like, you know, pick up my thyroid medication or whatever I need at the drugstore, you know, that kind of thing. But I lump it all into Fridays. That's my day to mask up and venture out. Nice. <laughs> all right, guys. Every Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll be always check out this on at Exotica, at Exotica TV and www.exotica.tv. Yes, dot TV is a domain name. All right. Uh, for hey guys. For the lovely Christy Canyon, for the also lovely Jay Handy, I'm the awesome, funny, special Dan Davis. Very See you guys soon. Very special. 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 I miss you. I will.